Yeah, you did. I mean, I grew up in a neighborhood around the corner from you, and um, so your neighborhood isn't known for churning out hockey players. And there's going to be three potentially in the NHL with you and your other brothers, and even a cousin would be another one, right? Um, I think there's like 28 players in the NHL. They're either black or biracial, and you might be four of them, Subans. Like, it's incredible, uh, you know, what your family has been able to do in the neighborhood. So what did growing up in the neighborhood you did, what kind of impact did it have on you? First of all, I just want to be, I, I'm quite amazed that you know this much information on me and my family <laughs> and stuff. It's pretty crazy, man, because you're naming some stuff that I didn't even know. Yes, you know yeah. what I mean? So, um, but you know what? Yeah, it's, 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 it's unbelievable, man. Like, to have three brothers, you know, that have the potential to play in the NHL and, uh, you know what, to be honest with you, there's, there's no secret. It's not like my parents are putting stuff in their food or, you know, nothing like that. It's just, you know what, we, we have a set of morals and values that have been instilled in us since we were little kids. And um, I it's guess... It's a tough neighborhood, so did your dad is, and mom step in and say, listen, you can't... You know what, I, I can tell you this right now, growing up in Rexdale, I grew up in a pretty good part of Rexdale, but there's a lot of distractions. And you know what, I, I think that's an excuse that a lot of people use of where you grew up or who your friends are, or where you live, it's an excuse. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I knew what I wanted to do. My brothers knew what they wanted to do, and that's why we're being successful. And our parents helped us get there. And it's just basically hard work, man. Like, just tons of hard work and, you know, just keeping your, your head on the straight and narrow and not looking east or west, just looking north and just go as hard as you can. Right. When your dad is, you know, higher up at a school, either yeah. principal or vice principal, he's a tough guy, right? Big Carl. Big Carl's a pretty tough guy. He's a big man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes maybe I think I can take him, but uh, he, he usually knocks that right out of me right away. Um, but you know what? My, my dad's been uh, in education now for 30 years. He just received the award uh, for excellence in education. Um, you know what? He, he, he's at Brookview Middle School. It's a tough school, a challenging school. And, but you know what? What he's done with that school, you can imagine having five kids and being at one of the toughest schools in the district of Toronto. That's yeah. not an easy life to live. You know, and I'm old enough now to realize that, but, you know, at the same token, I'm like, geez, he's doing a good job, yeah. and, and he's working really hard, and the guy just has a passion. He has a passion to help people. You know what I mean? I just say, Dad, sometimes take it easy. You know, you don't have to be running around every five seconds. He's sponsoring a kid. He's taking a kid skating. I'm like, you know, Dad, you still got to take me to the gym. You know, I know I'm 22, but, geez, I, I want to get a ride every now and That's then. Right. You know what I mean? You know, you talk about getting a driver. You don't you have a driver's license? You can't drive yourself? No, I got a driver's license. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, geez, when you're doing two-a-days sometimes, yeah. you know, it'd be Too nice. Tired. Dad, you know, can I get a ride? He's like, Pete, I got to go to school. You know, get, get on the bus or something. <laughs> get on the bus. And, can you imagine Pete gets, man gets on the bus? That would be... Hey, I used to, man. Yeah. There's no shame in that. I tell Malcolm and Jordan to jump yeah. on the bus every now and then. There's no shame in really? that. Speaking of Malcolm and speaking about um, transportation, uh, we got a, a question for you from, oh. from Malcolm, your brother. Uh, hey, PK, George. Uh, sorry I couldn't be here today. But, uh, yeah, if you, if, you, if you guys know PK, you know that he's not the best driver around. Uh, so I was just wondering, I was thinking about it the other day, how did you pass your driving school so easily with such flying colors, PK? Thanks, guys. Okay, you know what? I'm going to tell you, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on a second, hang on. I know the answer to this question. Before I answer this question, yeah. that's just not a smart move on Malcolm's part, right? Because he just went for his driver's license, right? Right. And, you know, Malcolm, I think he's making, what, $50 in the OHL a yeah. week or something like that? He's going to want you to buy him a car. Oh, no, he's going to want to use my car. <laughs> he's going to want to use it. Now, he's going to have to do a couple chores around the house, maybe clean my room a couple times, <laughs> you know, maybe brush off a couple of the gold medals on the wall before he gets a chance <laughs> to take a ride in the car. Yeah, you like that one. <laughs> So clearly he's raised a touchy subject with yeah. how did you get your driver's yeah. license. Yeah, you know what? I've been, uh, I've gotten better at driving. I think, to be completely honest with you, the driving school teacher was a Habs fan, yeah. so I signed a picture for him. Maybe that's how I got it. I, I'll be honest.